Okay, so next example, example, uh, we say example two, uh, question, question one B. Okay, so the given triple integral in a uh, Cartesian coordinate is e to the power of the square root of x square plus y square plus z square well, dv. So, what is the solid? Solid is bounded by uh, surface of z square root of y minus x squared minus y squared and z equal to square root of x square plus y square. Okay, so um, for the first one, you will get you will get a hemisphere, which is part of the um, circle with sphere sphere uh, the sphere with radius one, one and this is one. That is the first one. Okay, the top one. Yeah. X, Y, and Z. Okay, and how about this one? So that one is give you a cone, right? That is a cone equation. A cone. So that is your cone. Open. Both are open. Open cone and open hemisphere. This is open. But to make sure that they, you have a solid, then you have to close them. Which means that you have, you have to combine the hemisphere and the cone. So, uh, it looks like when you combine them together, so you will get this particular shape. So, that is part of the cone. So, meaning that if, if, if we read again the instruction here, so the solid is bounded by the hemisphere and the cone, the hemisphere and the cone. So, meaning that we have to uh, erase uh, the other surface. So, this we don't want this, right? Okay, so you have the combination of the cone and the hemisphere. So we know that this one hem this has hemisphere with this one, so this one should be one. And then um uh you have to know the size of this cone. So I will show you how can we determine the phi for this particular cone. So as, as you can see, the cone is just like the umbrella upside down. You open the umbrella upside down where the angle of that uh, cone is given by this phi. But as for now, we have no idea what is the phi of this. Okay, so maybe you again still wonder why we only consider the phi for this. So actually, as I mentioned before, when you open the umbrella, you will open the umbrella. Uh, so it looks like this one is your vision on the Y plane, right? So how about on the vision on the Z X plane? So on the Z X plane as well, you have the umbrella open up for this particular size. Okay. How about the uh, the other side? The other side, which means on the y plane, when it is negative. So, over here. So, that is also open for um, uh, the angle of theta. And how, how about the other side that you can see that uh, clearly? Also, they open it uh, together. Okay. So, I would say that uh, it is will open simultaneously for the angle of phi. So let's say your phi is 30 degree. So you will open. So you will open the umbrella for 30 degree all over the all over the uh, axis. I mean around. You will just circling around the z axis for z axis positive with the angle of 30 degree. Hopefully you understand that. Okay. It is not the combination. Maybe you, you say, uh, 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 why it is not 60? Yeah, you, it is not 60 because if 60, you have a larger cone. You just consider this one, this side. Um, uh, okay, okay. So, 30 degree and then you're just circling around for only 30 
degree. Just circling around the, uh, the Z axis with 30 degree uh, angle. Okay, that is what I mean. For, that is for the phi. Okay, so back to the question here. Now, you have to find the phi. Because in the uh, example here, they don't give you the instruction here. They don't give you the information about the, the size of the phi. Okay, so then how can we get the phi? So, you have to look back with your equation here, the cone. So, that is, this is the cone, right? And so, the equation is given in the uh, Cartesian coordinate. So, now we want to convert that into spherical coordinate. Okay, so how can we convert? So, we know that now, uh, we know this one should be R squared, right? So, we do, the, we do it slowly, I mean from the Cartesian to cylindrical first. So, you will get this one, right? Z equal to R. So, the cone in the spherical coordinate is given by Z equal to R. How about the equation in spherical? So, as we know, uh, using this uh, relationship, so what is the equation of Z in spherical? So, you have rho cos phi. Rho cos phi is equal to R. R is rho sine phi. Rho sine phi. And then you can see that here, they are already converted into spherical. But you have to simplify that. So it looks like we can cancelling out the rho. And then you will have a sine phi over cos phi equal to 1. So this will give you tangent phi equal to 1. So then phi is given by inverse tangent 1. So what is the tangent? So that the what is the tangent will give you 1? The tangent of what will give you 1? So it is 45 degree or, or we say that this one is supposed to be pi over 4. Okay, so actually as we know that in trigonometric uh, expression, so the answer is non-unique. Okay, but if you look at from the size of the triangle here, so you have this particular size, right? It could, should be no more than um, no more than 90 degrees. So the possible answer when the uh, when uh, to give you one when the phi here or the, the, the angle here is 45 degrees. Okay, so now we know that the phi here, then we can see that now you, have, you will get phi equal to pi over four so now you know that your phi over four is the highest phi is cannot be more than 45 degree because the size of cone is actually for 45 degree cone okay about the um the equation so z equal to square root x squared plus y squared z equal to r and phi equal to pi over four this one this one and this one they are actually the same curve, sorry, the same surface, which is a cone. But the way, the representation of them is different. So this one is in Cartesian, this one in cylindrical, and this one in spherical. Okay, so next, if I give you, I ask you, what is the uh, surface if phi equal to uh, pi over 3? Can you answer that? Yeah, it is, should be a cone, but it should be larger cone. What I mean by larger cone here, this one is in degree if you will get 60, right? And this one in, in degree will give you 45. So if this is the 45 size, 45 degree cone, so if you have a 60 degree cone, so it should be more wider. So the wider, wider cone. Where the phi here is 60 degree. Okay, so if, if I give you phi equal to pi, pi, pi over 2, what is that? That is hemisphere, right? Yes, that is hemisphere. If I give you uh, um, phi equal to uh, 3 pi over 2. So you, you cannot you cannot have a specific uh, surface but you can just say that it should be part of the sphere. Okay. 
because the side is more than more than 90 degree okay so these are the equation how can you know the the phi the size the phi, the, the, the angle use it from the uh, cartesian coordinate if they if they give you um the equation in cartesian sometimes you will get the cone where you have this particular equation x squared plus y squared so this is also a cone but the size maybe you have to find it using the same the similar method as like this okay so you will get the phi equal to constant and you will, you still have a cone but maybe a wider or a bit um, smaller cone it depends on the result that you will obtain okay so we back to the uh, problem here so now we already have the phi is um, 45 degree right so we have this one 45 degree okay so um so now we want to okay how about the integrand okay the integrand we, uh, is uh, given to you is e to the power of square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared so we know that this one e rho squared square root so you will get e rho okay so now we put into the triple integral Okay, so you have e rho uh, rho squared that, that is dv sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, so just now we already obtained the solid, this one. Okay, you we want to get the limit of uh, rho. Okay, so how can you determine the rho? So you sketch a line starting at the origin okay and the smallest row is zero because uh, they are passing through the origin uh, i mean that the, uh, the the point of zero 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 is part of the solid so the smallest row should be zero and the highest row the highest row that you can see here is one okay so one. the same like that you determine the limit of r in polar and all cylindrical okay so how about the limit of phi the limit of phi uh, as you can see here your solid here is uh, uh, lying along the z-axis positive which means that the smallest phi can be zero and the highest phi as we obtained just now the highest phi is pi over pi over four right 45 degree pi over 4 and how about the theta okay what the, how can you get the theta theta is region okay as i mentioned from the previous example how can you have the region here so the region here is of course you will standing like that right okay and then what is a region a region is when you put yourself outside the solid along the axis and you're looking down you're looking down what is the dominant the dominant uh, curve that you can see from the sky so you will see this particular this particular this is the dominant curve that you can see it is a circle a complete circle so when you have a complete circle so your theta should be 0 to 2 pi okay so for spherical coordinate we don't need to sketch no, normally we don't sketch the the region because we don't interested on the value of r we only want to get the theta which is the 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 angle on the xy axis sorry on the xy plane so i mean that when you sketch so you can sketch you can have uh, a circle complete circle but we don't bother about the 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 size of the circle but we are just bordering on the angle of theta so you have since you have a complete circle then your theta is 0 to 2 pi so now we plug in all the limit for this particular uh, variable so theta 0 to 2 pi uh, rho is 0 to 1 and phi is 0 to pi over 4 45 degree okay and as you can see here 
uh, all the limits are constant. Why? Because your solid is still part of the hemisphere. Center ideology. But if, if, if it is shifted somewhere, and then your function, I mean your uh, limit must be function. But for spherical, sometimes for me, it's quite complicated uh, if we have something function. But it is still possible to be asked in the exam. Okay. So now we want to complete this integration. So you can see that your row uh, exponential form and the polynomial. So it's like, again, we need to apply the, uh, the tabular method. Okay. So as you can see here, you have to integrate the row first. So in the integrand, there is a e row row squared. So here you have to integrate e row row squared again using a tabular method so i put it out okay so then uh, this row squared to be differentiated e row to be integrated and then applying the tabular method um, then this is the, i'm sure that you have no problem here right if you have a problem then please let me know that i can uh, explain for that so then uh, the answer will be row squared e row minus 2 row e row plus 2 you go and replace the limit 0 to 1. So this one, so I don't need to explain that you can just see it yourself. And we will get E minus 2. And if we plug in the solution in the triple integral back. So now you have to integrate the sign. So E minus 2. You will get minus cos phi limit 0 to pi over 4 d theta. Okay, so e minus 2, then negative cos phi over 4 plus cos 0, and then integrate theta. So you will get theta 0 to 2 pi. Then you have to evaluate uh, the cos 45 and cos 0. So cos 45, and this is the answer. Cos 1, cos 0 will give you 1. And when you, um, then normally you need to evaluate this. You can leave your answer in this form. Then you will get 1.3219. Okay. So that is the solution for the question 1b. Okay, so next we will look at the question 2. Again, you are given the spherical uh, Cartesian coordinate, then you have to convert to spherical coordinate and then solve using the spherical coordinate. 